what is up guys so today this is going to be a little bit of a different video as you can see already i am holding the mic so that means this is going to be more of a podcast style episode um you know i'm, I'm going to be talking about whatever this and that and the other but this is uh there's not gonna be a whole lot of graphics so if you if you just want to you know put your phone down do some homework i don't know do some chores i don't know what you do uh, whatever you do have fun um do whatever you need to and just listen uh that's what this is about so i'll go ahead and say this video idea was brought to me by uh the youtube account named sylvie lafay daughter I, I don't know if i pronounced that right so if i didn't i'm sorry but um yeah there uh this is for you you requested this and your request your specific comment let me see what it was real quick it was the um it was on the post i made about video ideas and it was i think exploring houston's options if they were to pass on qb at two would be interesting do you think they can get their guy at 12 and you know i developed this idea a little further um i'm doing multiple teams i'm doing just kind of some potential interesting draft scenarios that could happen in the draft on thursday um so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to kind of go down the draft i'm not going to hit every team i'm going to hit the teams that i feel are the most interesting in the spot that they are in and what they have so starting off with Houston, because I feel like Carolina, you kind of just know what you're getting with Carolina right now. They're going to take whatever quarterback, whoever you think it is, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, I don't know, whatever. Either way, the point, um, QB or not, uh, you know, that's the real question for Houston. Uh, at pick two, personally, I don't think they're going to take a quarterback right now. Um, I'm trending towards that, but that can always change. I mean, I've said the Baker Mayfield thing a million and a half times. If they don't take a QB, can they stay at two? Can they move down? Absolutely. Um, but in my opinion, at two, you have to get Will Anderson. Um, he's too good of a player. You have too many needs. And this is actually an idea, Houston in general, that I request or asked a friend about a couple years, uh, not a couple years, wow, no, a couple weeks back. Um, I, I just mentioned, I was like, you know, why, why should they take a quarterback? I think Houston is probably the worst team in their division. Even next year, they have improved their roster, but so did everybody else in their division. Um, they don't have as good of playmakers as any team in their division does. Tennessee, Derrick Henry, uh, even Traylon Burks is probably better than much of anyone the Texans have outside of Damian Pierce. Um, or at least potential-wise, he has better potential because Nico Collins, he's a fine player, but he's never going to develop into anything amazing, I don't think. Uh, John Mechie could be good, but, you know, whatever. You don't know yet. Um, Robert Woods is fine, but he's a little older, but, which is fine, but he could, he's, he'll be okay. Either way, the point is, Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, Travis Etienne, Trevor Lawrence. Either way, you get the point. I don't think they're going to be good in their division. So, if you, in my opinion, if you draft a quarterback, whether it be whoever, Young, Stroud, Richardson, Levis, you're going to really... You're gonna sit there and you're gonna like if you draft a quarterback, no matter who it is, you're probably gonna win more because for that next season, because quarterbacks are the most important piece of a team, obviously enough. Um, but if you don't draft a quarterback, if you draft at all, I'm not talking about a quarterback at all, then you're gonna be worse. And now that might seem like, well, why would you want to be worse next year? Well, their roster is probably the worst in the league. Maybe Arizona's worse. You can argue it, but it's it's bottom three for sure. And with being that bad, and none of these quarterback prospects, in my opinion, are A-plus players. They're all A-minus at best, and I think that's really just Bryce Young and then B-pluses for the rest of them um, in terms of just how they look right now. They're pro kind of a mush of how they are now, how good they are as a prospect, and their potential. Yes, Anthony Richardson potential is out of this world, but right now he's not playable. Um, so either way, you get the point. So that, I don't think they're going to be good, so why not just – Wait it out and try to fill your roster out. Get Will Anderson at two. Get Jalen Carter at two. Get Tyree Wilson at two. Whoever you want. And then at 12, go get something to help your quarterback as well, whether it be someone to play right tackle or a receiver or a tight end or anything. I mean, you could – even something else on the defense. Something just to make your team better. Spend this whole draft making your team better and then worry about quarterback next year when you have two elite quarterback prospects in – Drake May and uh, Caleb Williams. So they're both better prospects than anybody is this year. So, in my opinion. So I just think you need to sit on that, in my opinion. But the question was, would they pass on a quarterback and then get one at 12? Maybe so. Yeah, I think the quarterbacks are going to fall. I think Bryce Young will go one. And then I don't know. 
to me, Will Levis just seems like a cult. I think he'll go to the Colts. I don't. I, he could be second quarterback gone. That wouldn't shock me necessarily. C.J. Stroud could fall to seven to eight, maybe. A team could jump up like Tennessee to get him around there. Um, and then Anthony Richardson, he's a wild card because I, I, I just don't know. And this is not like what I think is exactly going to happen, but I'm just saying this is a scenario. So with that said, I just think Houston would benefit, honestly, if they don't take a quarterback at the second spot. So you might disagree, and that's fine, but that's just my opinion. Um, I think that would be good for them, and I think they should do that, is skip out on a quarterback. So next, um, Arizona is my next team I have listed. Um, yeah, their third player. And, you know, there's one single goal for them, and it's to get the best player available who isn't a quarterback. Could they stay at three? Yeah. Should they move down? Maybe. Uh, I think it is in their best interest to try and move down, but there's limits to that. You can't go too far. because you know, teams that could potentially trade up. Let's think about this. Seattle, maybe, if they get hungry for a quarterback. Um, Green Bay's a new one now that they have officially traded Aaron Rodgers as of today. Um, this is recording uh, on, what is it, Monday night. So, um, they, there's teams that could jump up, but I don't think that they can afford to trade down to pick 13 where Green Bay is, or even 11 where Tennessee is, um, two teams that could trade up. So they'd have to find somebody between about four and eight willing to trade down because, in my opinion, if they trade that far, they're going to lose out on everything they need. You're going to lose out on the highest-ranked prospects, the Will Andersons, the Jalen Carters, the Tyree Wilsons, um, even the Christian Gonzalez more than likely, Devin Witherspoon as well. Um, And I think Arizona's roster is so depleted that they need one of those high-end players. And if you get down to 13, 15, you just might not be able to do it. Um, So. I think they need to trade down, but only if they can, and if not, stick and pick. Um, and only if they can into a good spot, as I've said. So that's Arizona. Didn't take a whole lot of time on them, but that's kind of the point. Um, you know, I just I'm not gonna sit here and relish on everybody. Not everybody's that important in this draft, but moving on. Detroit. You know, I'm gonna go with Seattle and Detroit kinda in one thing. It's about less about moving down or up and less about who they take but it's more about just the fact that they're interesting in that they both have had relatively good seasons, but because of trades, they have top 10 picks, top five, top six picks, really. And then they also have their own picks at 18 and 20. Detroit has six and 18 and Seattle has five and 20. Um, You know, Detroit really showed off on offense this year. And, you know, that's a huge advantage that they have a defensive spot right now. Um, uh, Like, because, they, they have a high enough pick where they can get a really good defensive player and then another pick where they can either aid their offense or get more to their defense. Um, I think they should definitely, with their first pick, talking about Detroit first, they should take Tyree Wilson, Jalen Carter, uh, uh, what, Witherspoon, Devin Witherspoon, or Christian Gonzalez. It doesn't matter, whoever they want. But at 18, you can either go get, let's say, let's say with six they go with Tyree Wilson. Well, let's say one of those corners falls. Christian Gonzalez is available at 18 or maybe even 14, and you trade up a couple picks. That's an elite move. Um, you go from having the best, one of the best offenses in the league and a terrible defense to maybe having the best offense and defense combination. I mean, maybe not, you know, number one and number one, but number one and number four, or number one and number six, and no one has better than two and nine, you know? You know what I'm saying? Uh, either way, if you do, cool. If you don't, great. I can't hear you. Um, but... You know, and even if not that, Joey Porter Jr. could be there at 18. Uh, Deontay Banks could be there. There's other players. Or vice versa. If you take a um, Devin Witherspoon early, maybe you get a chance on Lucas Van Ness or uh, Miles Murphy at 18. So they could do that. But they also could try to aid their offense and help whoever's going to be their quarterback this year and then next year as well because I think that's a big deal. Is Jared Goff going to stay around? I don't necessarily think so. Maybe he'll be there next year, but – a year after that, I'm not too sure. So, obviously, they traded TJ Hawkinson this year. So, why not at 18 or uh, go and replace that hole? Because, I mean, yeah, Brock Wright, Shane Zostra played fine, but they're not high-end playmakers, and you want those on your team anywhere you can have them. And if there's a guy like Dalton Kincaid or Michael Mayer on the board at 18, you have to at least consider it with your room that you have. So, Detroit's interesting. I would really like it if they took two defensive players, but then again, at the same time, they may not just be available for that. Um, and then jumping over to Seattle officially, 
they have some interest as well. Um, they need their D line fixed. They did bring that guy in from Green Bay, who I can't remember his name ever. Um, starts one of those names. The first or last starts with a P, but I don't know past that. Um, I want to say Puna Ford, but I just really don't think that's it. Uh, that he's that. Uh, yeah. Either way, um, yeah, that's an old. I don't. Either way. Either way. Either way. Um, you know, maybe they want Geno Smith for one more year. He played good enough to play for one more year, but I don't really feel like Geno Smith's gonna ever reach the total production he did this last year. I think Geno had a great year. I think you know it's great to see. I'm glad for him. Uh, it's good to see guys like him come back and have really good years. But I just don't know if that's ever going to happen again. Um, he's already 31. Uh, he never did anything in the league until this last year. So I think it could be a spot where they seriously look at taking a quarterback as early as pick five. A guy like Anthony Richardson, who you have to sit anyways, um, would be really interesting to me because Geno Smith, obviously, he had – a very unorthodox career in the NFL. Most players like that who get drafted, you know, in the I think he was the third round, maybe second round, you're not considered a high end guy necessarily. You go in, he's probably the second best quarterback in that draft outside of EJ Manuel as a prospect, but he had no success. Most of those guys are out of the league in a few years, but he was able to stick himself in the league and end up learning behind Russell Wilson for whatever, how many years he was there, I don't even know. Um, and he got himself a chance once Russ got traded, and that was huge for him. So I don't know if there, if he is like as good of a leader as it sounds like he could be. It might be a really good place for a guy like Anthony Richardson to go because you have a guy who can really just teach you the ways of the NFL, a guy who's seen it from every angle, not just being an elite quarterback who is stuck up like the perception of Aaron Rodgers is not that he's necessarily like that. I don't know. But you get a guy who has been in your shoes. He's developing as a rookie. He may not be that successful early on, but he was able to make himself successful, and he knows how to make yourself successful. That could be very good for a guy like Anthony Richardson. Um, you know, that, that's a different story. But And then at 20, they can, you know, do whatever they need to if Miles Murphy's there, whatever. Like I said, they definitely need to hit defense at some point in these first two picks, whether it be a corner, because, yes, Tariq Woolen's good, but you could definitely always have more than one corner. Um, but, yeah, either way. Moving on from them, we'll get to Chicago. Chicago has moved down to nine, obviously, with the Carolina Panthers trading for the pit first overall pick. And they've been mocked guys like Peter Skaronsky like 100 billion times. But there's obviously other options. It's not just a lock that Peter Skaronsky is their guy. Should they take Peter Skaronsky? Maybe. That's definitely not a bad pick, in my opinion. But Jalen Carter is an option if he's there. Uh, Witherspoon or Gonzalez could be options. Um, but in my opinion, this draft has to be about – securing their young quarterback in Justin Fields, whether it be a receiver, a lineman, whatever. The receivers probably aren't good enough to be drafted in the top 10, so maybe not go that way. But you have to protect your quarterback, obviously. And if you don't, you end up with teams like Baltimore or Green Bay who have Lamar and Aaron Rodgers who are disgruntled and upset and want to be traded or whatever they happen to have. Whatever. You, yeah, you get the point. Um, and I think for Chicago, it has to be an offensive player. Uh, maybe they don't jump to a 10-win team this year by drafting a left tackle, and that's okay. You don't have to do this in one year, but you need to show promise and progress, and what better way to do that than to take Peter Skaronsky or Paris Johnson or whoever at that pick and just get a legit tackle in there to protect your quarterback. Um, you could also, like I said, take a weapon, and maybe you want to tie it in. Um, Cole Komet's fine. Uh, he, he's a good player. I'm not saying he's bad. But he's probably a middle of the pack tight end in the league. You know, he's not a he's probably never gonna be an elite tight end. So maybe if you think Dalton Kincaid could be, maybe you go with him. But I, Michael Mayer, same deal. Either way, I just don't feel like that's maybe then the wheelhouse. Cole Komet's good enough for them to not need that. Um, but then Bijan Robinson could be an interesting pick. I mean, yes, they have uh Deontay Foreman, they have Khalil Herbert, and they have Travis Homer. I don't know why he came to mind. Either way, um, you know, they have a running back committee kind of coming together, but Bijan Robinson is Bijan Robinson. I mean, he is the best potential prospect in this class, maybe as a whole. Um, and but, you know, he would be a lot of help for Justin Fields with his all around ability to run the ball and make that game very efficient and then receive as well. Whatever. But to me, it's just your most cost efficient pick that you're going to need on your team that's going to help you improve, and that's going to be valuable to your team for the near future, is going to be a left tackle. Doesn't matter what his name is, get a left tackle. And then next, Philly. 
Philly is the most interesting non-top five or whatever team in this draft. Um, they have pick 10 and 30 because their GM isn't afraid to make moves. And last year, I believe they got this pick from just trading down and still getting the guy they wanted to in a draft a year or two ago. What a great move there. Um, obviously, they're interesting because of that reason, the fact that they have 10 and 30. Um, and they were just in the Super Bowl and almost won it. I mean, they were close. It's not like they were gotten the brakes beat off of them. Um, you know, I think after the offseason they had, they have to hit these picks and do them well. The defense took a lot of losses. Uh, they lost both starting linebackers in Kaiser White and uh, TJ Edwards. Uh, and they lost Javon Hargrave, which is a huge deal. Um, if they can replace these positions, they'll be in a good spot. But you're going to have to do that probably in multiple ways than just one. And it's probably not going to be in the first round for both of them. Um, they do have N'Kobe Dean, who was a player drafted last year, and I have a lot of hope in N'Kobe Dean. Um, I just think he was a good prospect. I liked him last year, and he's a guy who I think could definitely be their starter, and you wouldn't be upset about that. Um, I'd like to see him grab a D lineman. If Jalen Carter's at 10, I think it's pretty much a guarantee they take him. I don't. That is so much of a Howie Roseman pick. I just see if he's there, it's done. There's no questions about what's going to happen after that. Um, but if he's gone, Tyree Wilson, if he's there, I don't think he will be, but either way, I'm just mentioning him in case, uh, Miles Murphy, Lucas Van Ness, Kalaja Kansi. I don't think any of them are out of the picture at 10 personally. Um, their offense lost guard, Isaac Samalo. They could replace him with Cam Jurgens in the, uh, who was taken in the second round, I think a year or two ago. Bijan's an option at 10 for them as well. They lost Miles Sanders. Yes. They brought in, um, um, wow, Rashad Penny, but Rashad Penny's not that great of a running back. He can't stay healthy. He, he's fine. He's a good guy to have in like a committee, but I don't think he's necessarily a guy you're going to stop to not take B. John Robinson for by any means. Um, and I also think Jameer Gibbs is a possibility there as well. Maybe at more at 30, um, but not at 10. But I think he's definitely a first-round player. He, Jameer Gibbs walks into that room and starts immediately. Um, he is basically like a Alvin Kamara Jr., in my opinion. Uh, not saying he's worse than him, or he's not exactly like him, but he's similar. They have really good... Uh, pass catching abilities, really solid contact balance, just like both of the, uh, them. And I, I think that's definitely an option. But to me, you have to take a defensive player, whether it's any of those guys. You could even take a corner. Um, Gonzalez or Witherspoon could definitely be there at 10. Um, and I would say that's great because maybe you have two good corners in Darius Slay and uh, what's his name? James Bradbury. But And Avante Maddox, if he's still on contract, which I think he is, He's a good player in the slot as well, but those guys are both old in uh, Slay and Bradbury, and I don't think those are good. I mean, that seems like a perfect situation for a guy like Christian Gonzalez to go. Christian Gonzalez is raw, but those are two of the league's best corners, and if he can play behind them, get a little bit of play time, but by year two, he might be an all-pro. I mean, that could really happen with how good the development could be behind those two guys. Um, and then... Just to mention, I mean, they, they definitely do need to help the defensive line, though. And Philly does like taking the trenches. We know that, obviously. Could they take, uh, on the offensive line, Peter Skaronsky if he's there at 10? I think so. Uh, you know, Lane Johnson's getting really old. They lost Ciamalo. They don't have a lot of faith in Cam Jurgens. He could be an option at guard. Um, but he could also just be kind of, he could play at guard some and then move over to the, like, the right tackle spot whenever Lane Johnson goes. So, either way, you get the point of that. Defensive line, though, they're very old. Um, Fletcher Cox and then uh, Brandon Graham are probably within a year from retirement. And then you have guys like Josh Sweat and Derek Barnett, but they're okay players, but they're not they're not great. I mean, they're fine. They're good in rotation. They're, they're good to keep on the field. They have Hassan Reddick, obviously, but, you know, I'm not questioning him right now. But I just I, – I would – I don't think you would stop and put Derek Barnett or uh, – Sweat over Tyree Wilson, Miles Murphy, Lucas Van Ness, Kalaja Kansi. You you just wouldn't. They're not good enough for that. They're fine players, and you would you keep them around because they're not going to hurt you at all. But they're just not anything that's going to stop you. So you know they also have routes that maybe pick thirty for a guy like Brian Brissy if he's still around. Um, you know, so I think they they have a lot of options, and they have to hit their linebackers um, as well. Which their linebackers aren't going to be at thirty. Maybe Drew Sanders. Maybe Jack Campbell. Maybe Trenton Simpson. Other than that, um, uh, Henley, Day and Henley, or whatever it is, I, maybe. But I just personally, I don't think that's value 
connecting. I, I think you might as well wait in the second round. One or multiple of them will probably still be available in the second round. Um, I would almost guarantee at least one of them. Unless somebody just goes crazy on linebacker out of nowhere. Either way, um, Philly, to me, is, you know, I think they're still a contender. I don't think their window's closing at all um, because A.J. Brown's young. Jalen Hurts is young. Yes, their offensive line is old. There's no better team at drafting offensive linemen than the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm not concerned about that. Same with the defensive line. The problems they have with their age are their literal strong suits in the draft, so I don't have a problem with them at all. Um, they need to figure out their corners and their secondary for the near future, um, or the long-term future, I guess, technically, more than like two or so years. But either way, you get the point. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much all my interesting teams. The other teams, maybe they're interesting to a degree, um, you know. but I think a lot of teams have one specific thing they're going to get. Like, as a Steelers fan, I think – it's corner or it's tackle, preferably tackle. I think that's more of a need, but it's one of those. Uh, for the Washington Commanders, it's corner. It's maybe safety in Brian Branch. It, mm, that's that's pretty much where you're sitting right now, unless a quarterback falls and they just get surprised that he's there. Um, the New England Patriots, it's probably a corner, maybe a tackle. You get the point. It, there's just not a whole lot of other things that are super wishy-washy for the teams. So um, let me know how you guys feel about these. Let me know what you think about some of these teams. Uh, let me know if there's another team that I missed that you just think has an interesting situation themselves. Um, but, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button, the like button. Please do. Can't control it if you don't, though. But, yeah, thank you all for watching, and peace.